In today's video, we're gonna go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. This is why the ocean freaks me out way more than space ever will. So back in the 1970s, that's very important, the 1970s, the Navy had put down an acoustic sensor device and this went all throughout the bottom of the ocean. Its initial purpose before this project really got going was for them to map out the ocean floor and to be able to detect submarines and things like that. Now this came out from someone in the Navy whose responsibility was to like monitor the sensors on this. They were detecting underwater submersible type objects that were traveling at thousands of miles per hour, which wasn't possible at the time. This happened in the 70s. So that on top of this, they had detected many structures underwater that were active and that the Navy needed to stay clear of because they didn't fully understand what it was. Like, how does the Navy not understand what it is? And this is a report from someone from the Navy in the 1970s. So much of our ocean has been left undiscovered. Maybe there's a reason why. But a lot of people think that this is a bunch of hoo-ha and it's just a legend. Let me know what you think and come over here if you want some of my long form content. I have no doubt that there's things in the ocean that the government just does not want us to know about. But just like someone commented in my videos the other day about space, seeing the stars, getting to render photos of the stars, there's things in the sky that they get to see that they're not allowed to talk about or they're too scared to talk about because they're told to be quiet. And I'm sure that happens in the waters as well. The following video is from an unidentified woman who is absolutely terrified in her own home. She states that there's a toy that constantly goes off at all, all hours of the night, just as if a kid's playing with it, but it shouldn't be. There are no batteries in this toy. And as she goes to show you it and to basically unscrew the back, something interesting happens that's caught on camera and it happens quickly. As she approaches the toy, it looks like as if it moves away from her. And then she shows you there are no batteries in this toy. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. Vino la cocina con un desarmador. Yo van varias veces que se prende. That would be really jarring to have a child's toy go off in the middle of the night just to open it up and there's no batteries. The only reason why I'm calling this video a hoax, they didn't show the other side of the battery cover. There could easily be a slot or something holding the batteries behind that cover. They actually just perfectly picked it up and moved it perfectly to the side, which either or, I really think that this is a fake video, mainly because they didn't show the back of the battery pack. Let me know what you think. Do you think this is a real paranormal video? Or do you think that there's some kind of backup battery in the toy? But I noticed after she took the back off, she turned it on and it didn't turn on.
might just save this video because I do find performance art really interesting. This one though is a little bizarre. It would have been neat if one person was actually trying to draw like an image, some kind of portrait of some sort, and the other person was also trying to draw a portrait, but it really looks like they're just going back and forth tugging on each other's arms, just creating chaos. Which in itself is a form of art, but I would like to have seen something a little bit more creative out of it, you know? Common sense is at an all-time low and denial is a motherfucker. That's why I'm going to present you with the facts and expect you to do the heavy lifting with your critical thinking. First and foremost, the Mississippi River is the true Nile. In Isaiah 11:15, it says, And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over dry shod. That's what it says. The Nile does not do this. But you know what does? The Mississippi. <laughs> Second point. The Mississippi still runs through the ancient cities that it ran through in the beginning of time. Thebes. Cairo and Memphis. You have been made to believe that we named our cities after modern day Egypt, when in fact that is not true. Modern day Egypt named its cities after our cities in ancient America, which is also ancient Egypt. And before this video gets too long, I'm just gonna add in a final point. Did you know that the Americas have more pyramids than the entire planet combined? Yeah. <laughs> We'll get into the Grand Canyon on the next video. 90% of the Grand Canyon is off limits to the general public, which is backed by military services. But why? 1908, President Teddy Roosevelt decided that he wanted to protect the canyon from timber and mining operations. With this knowledge, a gentleman by the name of G.E. Kincaid, along with the Smithsonian professor by the name of S.A. Johnson, decided that they were gonna get a group together to do one final mineral expedition before it closed. What they discovered, however, was completely unexpected. About 40 miles upriver from El Tivar Crystal Canyon, they discovered sediment stains that didn't make sense for Arizona, USA. In addition to that, they also noticed a cavern entrance with steps leading up to it that was clearly a man-made structure. Once inside, they found an intricate underground city that could fit up to 50,000 people. There were ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs on the wall, granaries, tools made of copper. It did make sense. What all of this pointed to was an ancient civilization with advanced technology in America, in Arizona, with connections to ancient Egypt. After finishing his exploration, G.E. Kincaid, recognizing the massiveness of this discovery, decided that he needed to go back and take an even larger group and bring the Smithsonian along. But they weren't gonna allow him to do that. In fact, they offed him. And now in 2024, the Smithsonian completely denies all accounts of this and calls it a hoax. I really do not know why they would keep that from us if that was the case. I mean, if we're talking about a civilization of the past, I just don't understand why it has to be such a big deal. Let me know what you guys think about America being ancient Egypt. Do you believe this theory? We just bought a home and I think somebody may have been schmurdered in it because tonight we had a leak in our laundry room. Well, our laundry room was one of the only places upstairs that had flooring. And because of the leak, we just had to rip out the flooring. And let me show you what we found. First off, you're going to ignore the mess because obviously we're trying to get water up. But um, what is this? There is literal footprints in this stuff. I am freaking out right now. Um, I am waiting on a plumber and that's going to cost me a little over a grand just for him to get here. But um. Somebody tell me that I'm overreacting and that that's paint, even though I'm pretty sure it's not paint because I'm going to show you something where like the sticky tiles peeled up what's underneath it. It's underneath the sticky tile too. And if you've ever dealt with stuff like that or know people that work in the field of cleaning up stuff like that, um, paint doesn't soak through tiles like that. So send help. That looks like a nasty mess. This video is pretty new, so I don't know if there's any follow-up. Give me just a few moments. I'm going to look into this because 
I'm curious to see if they've made any recent posts. All right, so I looked in a little bit further of this video. I'm not gonna play the extra clip because they just recently uploaded a video not even five hours ago explaining on what everything was. So to keep it brief, basically it was identified as not being human blood, but she wasn't saying that it was not animal blood. She said that the person that they bought this house from had a lot of animals and really didn't take care of the house. So maybe that was just an injured animal that bled a lot or what have you, but apparently it wasn't human blood and they got the, the washroom fixed. So I'm a little sad that the mystery has been solved, but I'm glad it wasn't a murder scene. Dick, can you believe that? Oh my God. Oh what the my heck? God. That's the weirdest sunset ever. I've never seen it do that before. It's just, it's like a it looks like a Lego piece. It's, like it's a, just like sitting in the water. It's a layer of fog. Are you, are you kidding me? It looks like a pyramid. Earth is flat. Earth is flat. It looks it's fake. Closer too, isn't it? Whoa! When the weather's really dry, the glare, the glare goes away. And you can see like weird. the circle of the sun. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Why is it such a sight on the water? It looks like, like, it, it, looks like it, it looks like it's digital. Yeah, it looks digital. Okay. It looks like it's a Pac-Man or something. It's a galactic it's a car. It's a galactic. It's a galactic. That's so weird. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it really does look like the sun is setting in the ocean. I'm sure that that's some form of optical illusion. There's a lot of people in the comments saying it's because we're on a flat earth, that we're in a matrix. There's even one comment saying it's going through a portal and that people need to read the book of Enoch to understand. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I personally think that it's just an optical illusion of the distance and it just looks like it's setting in the water, but there really is people, especially in the comments, believing that it's a glitch in the matrix. Here is yet another reason why you don't go camping alone. What do you know? This looks like a tent or a tarp. That kind of sketches me out. So we're gonna relax for a while. Somebody's walking around out there very close to the tent. Somebody's out there. I don't know if they're coming this way or just walking around out there, I can't tell. Somebody's definitely walking around out there though. Hang on. Hello? I'm getting the f out of here. Hello? Hello? I don't know what the f this is, but we're getting out of here. Hang on. What do you want? I have a knife. Where's my knife? They're f with me. They collapsed my tent on me. I don't know which way they went. I think they went this way. I see you. I'm leaving. Don't follow me. I don't know where to go. I don't know which way to get out of here. They're coming behind me. I don't know what they're doing. They could just be around. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going. Get away from me! All right, we're back on a bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like camping in the woods. I don't know if I would do it one by myself or one without a gun. And two, I would not be openly saying, well, where's my knife if I think someone's around me. I'm gonna let them know, hey, I got that thing on me. These could be fake videos, but I do think it's real. I just wish that a person that goes out exploring like this would be better equipped for finding things outside of their tent. There's me personally, if I'm gonna put myself in this situation, I'm gonna bring a couple of my deer trail cams, my GoPro, and my cell phone. Those are all the things that I need. Before I camp, I'm gonna set up my cameras and hopefully I'll catch whatever's out there. And if they steal my cameras, it's auto-synced to my phone so I can at least record that footage, you know? And I know not everyone's equipped with that kind of stuff, but when you basically do this kind of thing for a living, you would think that you would situate yourself better for covering yourself. The fashion community is gonna hate me for this one. This is Michelle Lamy, and I fell into a deep dark rabbit hole last night, finding out more about her. Michelle was born in the 40s. She is around 80 years old. She's worked as an attorney, a clothing designer, a performer, a producer. She was born in France, but has lived in many places, including New York and Los Angeles. And she's the wife of fashion designer, Rick Owens, who is also known as the Lord of Darkness in the fashion community. Michelle actually discovered Rick Owens and a lot of people credit her for his career. One time, Michelle wore his head as a purse. I don't work in the
the fashion industry, so there's a lot of things that I probably don't understand, but Michelle is very highly respected among her peers, and many celebrities like the ones pictured here. Usher, Kim Kardashian, ASAP Rocky, and Kanye West. She has a very distinct style. Every morning, she draws a black line on her forehead, and she says she doesn't really have an explanation for it. She also stains her fingers black. It has been reported online that Michelle got her inspiration from the Emma Zieg women who also used to paint on their face. She's also known for having gold-plated teeth. But the rabbit hole that I fell into last night has people convinced that Michelle is a high priestess or witch of some sorts in the Hollywood scene. Now, I'm not saying she is or she isn't, and I simply cannot get into all of the details. The information is out out there if you want to look into it. But there's so much mystery surrounding this woman. Like I said, she is highly respected in the fashion and art industries. A lot of people really love her work, and a lot of other people are convinced that she controls a lot of what is going on in Hollywood, and that there's something much more sinister going on. Allegedly. Let me know your thoughts. I mean, if this lady is going for a demon or some kind of satanic look, she's killing it because anytime that I see this lady, it's almost like looking at a demon or what I would depict a demon. She's just got this very menacing vibe. She pulls her outfit off very well in that regard. The black fingernails, the paint on the face, the gold teeth. It's a very menacing look. And what kills me out of all of it are the shoulder pads. She's got those things jacked up. It looks like she created a character in a video game and decided that's how she's going to roll today. They have an experiment and I'll get you the exact um, experiment that it was where they have one gentleman in a room with his with a blindfold on and his hand on a remote control video game in front of him, but he can't see the video game. They have another gentleman in another room who's looking at the video game with no remote control. They create a mind link between the two and transfer this guy's mind into the other guy. He's now controlling the other guy's hands to play the video game. No way. Yes. This, this is documented. Documented. Real actual science. Actual science. Actual science. I'll send you. To, and listen, in Russia, the 2045 project, Ray Kurzweil, they've already took a monkey and transferred its consciousness into a computer. That was done in 2010. In 2000, I think 16 or 17, it was to transfer a human consciousness into a robot, which that's been done. In America, we have DARPA. They, are, they have the Avatar Project. Look that up, the Avatar Project. I wrote about it in my book, where they transfer a soldier's consciousness into a field robot and then the only thing that gets damaged if the robot blows up, the, the, the symbiotic link is disconnected through consciousness, but the, the soldier's obviously not going to die. And so this has all been done. This is real science being actively used right now. I do believe that there is governmental officials doing this sort of thing. I do think that there is already conscious transfer technology that they're working on at least and if not already have accomplished a bunch of projects with it, it's only a matter of time before it becomes public. It just makes me think that this is the reason why scientists are starting to talk about doing mind altercation technology, such as like putting the prisoners in a chair where instead of serving a 10 year sentence, they'll sit in the chair for 10 minutes and it'll feel like they've been in prison for 800 years. I, I just have a feeling that within the next five years, we're going to see some really crazy things when it comes to conscious technology. Let me know in the comments on what you think about that. Is anything that he's saying correct? Let me get into something about multiplication where Terrence has an issue with multiplication. I don't have an issue. I don't have an issue with multiplication. Then why, one times one is what? One times one should equal two. If you can show me one place in the universe. But you just, you just should. No, no, show me one place in the universe um, where one times one equals one, where an action times an action doesn't have a reaction. So I'm trying to be nice as pie because I, I'm, I'm inspired by what you're trying to do but you have no idea like before you, we go on further you feel that the theory of gravity is incorrect yes I feel and what like, do you think that is I feel that it's electricity I feel that gravity is the draft left behind from the electric force what do you think about that I didn't even want to touch it <laughs> the same th you keep finding the space where we could come together and you insist on teaching into it you just you gotta stop i'm not going to play too many of these joe rogan clips because for some reason they always get struck on my channel and get taken down but i have watched a good portion of this episode i'm not going to lie i felt bad for terrence howard because it just felt like they were treating him like a child the way they would talk about him while he was just sitting right there beside them it was really disrespectful in a way rejuvenation immortality and it can make you rich simultaneously 
Many tried, but only a few ever achieved its creation. The Philosopher's Stone is a legendary alchemical substance believed to have the power to turn base metals into gold or silver. Other names for it were the tincture and the powder. Alchemists believe it could help create the elixir of life, a potion that supposedly granted the drinker eternal life and eternal youth. It was also said to heal all illnesses, make lamps that burn forever, transmute regular crystals into precious gems and diamonds, and aid in the creation of homunculi that rule the world. Only the Elric brothers could help you then. The process in which alchemists tried to create the stone was called the magnum opus, or the great work. The first written mention of the stone appears in Chirok Meta by Zosimos of Panopolis around 300 AD. Some writers claim its history goes back to Adam, who supposedly got the knowledge from God and passed it down through biblical figures, helping them live longer. Various stories of transmutation have been rumored throughout the centuries. In the 16th century, Paracelsus believed in an element called alkahest, which he thought was the Philosopher's Stone. Others have interpreted the stone as being metaphorical and instead directed their search for the stone inward. Some believe it was a psychological process that was not to be taken literally. I love the lore behind the Philosopher's Stone, but like this video said, I truly think that the Philosopher's Stone, if it's a real thing, it's not something that exists outside in the world. It's something that exists within. Everyone has the ability to tap into their Philosopher's Stone and that grants a longer, healthier life. I know that sounds like super hipstery, but I really do think that way. Let me know what you guys think about the Philosopher's Stone. Do you think it's metaphorical? Do you think that it is something within inside oneself? Do you think it's something that exists in the world? Let me know. I love the lore behind it and I love the theories behind it. There's even some people that claim that they can make their own Philosopher's Stone. There's a lot of people in the comments on this video asking why nobody did anything. And to be fair, I probably wouldn't do anything in this situation either. It's way safer just to let this person do what they're doing. And at the end of the day, when those display phones get taken off of their register, they stop working. They're, they're practically useless. It just blows my mind that there's police vehicles sitting outside of this place and they're not doing anything about it. It doesn't even look like they're in their cop car, so they must either have been on lunch or just away. You have all lived before, and I'm gonna tell you exactly how you died in your past life. Now yes, this is just theories, but still, it's gonna blow your mind. Now first of all, at the root, you gotta start off with reincarnation. Now I'm sure you know what this is, it's a very popular, common belief, essentially stating that when we die, we just get reincarnated, born again, into different bodies, meaning you could have lived a thousand times, once as a bird, once as an ant, once as, you know, a few different humans. Now, this is where birthmarks come in. So birthmarks are a bit strange. You may have one. Let me know in the comments down below if you do. But we're not entirely sure what birthmarks genuinely mean, right? There's lots of theories about them. But if the two link up, this is where it gets interesting. So scientists have actually come out and said that birthmarks could genuinely resonate to reincarnation if the theory is true and could show you how you died in your past life and act almost like a warning to you in your present life. But now, what does your birthmark actually mean? So if you've got no birthmark, it's thought that you died in your past life of natural causes, maybe some kind of illness or just getting old. If you have a red birthmark, it's thought you may have died in a fire or a car crash or something in that kind of field. If you have a brown birthmark, it's thought that that is actually a wound. So either you were shot or something along those lines. Finally, if you have a very peculiar, colourful almost birthmark, some people have bright green ones that spread across their body, or just a birthmark which doesn't look normal, it's bigger than normal or it's a slightly different colour, then it's thought that you may have died in your past life to something very, very traumatic. Wow, that's actually pretty interesting about the birthmarks. I've heard theories about birthmarks and it's funny that he said that the brown ones are considered to be like wounds. I have two birthmarks. I have one on my side and one on my back and they're, they're kind of long and odd shaped. 
When I was a kid and people would point out my birthmarks, for some reason, I would tell them that's where I got stabbed. Why I would say that as a kid? No clue, but I used to say that. It just makes me wonder if I was tapping in with my reincarnated self or something, you know? Bruh. This is where the lightning came in at. That's crazy. Man, that's really scary because it looks like the lightning hit the building, touched the LED lights, and blew the LED lights throughout the whole room. That's terrifying. That kind of stuff scares me a lot. In the hot, arid desert, a flower surprisingly emerges from a rock. It's called a lithops, a type of succulent plant. During the dry summer, to avoid being eaten by small animals, they disguise themselves as small stones, blending seamlessly with the environment. Even if animals pass by, they're hard to spot. When rain finally comes and they absorb moisture, they rapidly swell and shed their outer skin, revealing their inner little bottoms. This process doesn't disrupt their disguise, but turns them into larger stones. Yet, during the breeding seasons of spring and autumn, they risk being eaten as they bloom in the clear afternoon skies, opening and closing once every 24 hours. This serves the purpose of aiding insects in pollen transfer, a process lasting typically five to seven days. Afterward, they enter a dormant phase, transforming from vibrant flowers back into cold stones. Follow me for more indoor gardening tips daily. I know this isn't a creepy video or a conspiracy video, but I had to throw this in there. And I'm sorry, I could not keep those plants around me because I would destroy them. I would constantly be peeling them apart. That just looks so satisfying to me. I had to add that. This is another instrument that was played, Celtic army. This is the sound the Roman soldiers would have heard in the Celtic enemies wherever they were fighting. Oh my gosh. Listen, just the sound. <laughs> Bro. You're done. You're done. Say goodbye to your family. <laughs> I have. Get your affairs in order. I have goosebumps <laughs> on goosebumps. Dude, okay. I just imagine myself there. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Looking at, like, the, the forest. Yeah, not knowing that if they're coming or You like, hear that? And you're like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Why was I born a man? <laughs> Come on. I actually forgot my spear <laughs> <laughs> in my tent. Dude, why'd you throw that at me? <laughs> Gotta go home, guys. <laughs> I got cut, everyone. If that's actually how that sound when they were preparing for battle, that would be pretty menacing. Also sounds like a really good buildup for like a heavy metal song. You just get that nice buildup, and then all of a sudden it just drops super heavy guitar riffs and drums. That would be really epic. Wait, what's that in the window? What's that in the window? Oh my god. Oh my god. There's a, there's a face. Dude, look at my screen. Look at my lens. You can't zoom in that far. There's a guy standing right there. Look at his face. Oh. What the fuck is that? Let's go, let's go. What the fuck is that? Go, 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 go now. Go now. Oh my god. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? Dude, I can't run no more. I can't run no more. What is that? A head? Is that a person? Dude, there's something orange over there. Look at that. It looks like a face. What the hell is that? I can see it on your camera. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't really see anything. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything. I'm pretty sure that these guys were just overhyping the situation. My dad mysteriously disappeared two years ago. When we went to go check up on him, we found this game. This was on his table, and it appeared that two other people were playing the game with him. I talked to all his friends. Till this day, we don't know who was there playing with him that night. I've never seen this game in my life. And when I looked it up, I found little to no information about it. And I'm wondering if anybody out there has seen this game. It's kind of creepy to even have it around. I've only opened it once. The rule book and the warning pamphlet gives me the chills. Please let me know if you've ever seen that game or no. Dang, it's like a bad case of Jumanji. Have any of you seen that board game? Because I've never seen it before. It looks really old. Willy Wonka is actually George Weasley from Harry Potter. That's right. Ron's older brother is the owner of the famous chocolate factory. All throughout the Harry Potter series, Fred and George make all sorts of mischievous inventions. At one point, they even have their own candy store. And these candies act in a similar way to Willy Wonka's candies, where they have physical repercussions on 
on the people that eat it. From changing their hair to making them sick or having nosebleeds, these candies can do it all. And after George's twin, Fred, died in the war, he couldn't bear to live in the same world without it. So instead, he uses the time turner to go back to a new place in time to start fresh and properly carry on Fred's legacy. And the crazy candy isn't the only thing George and Willy Wonka have in common. In one of the movies, George gets shot in the ear. And in Willy Wonka, he says that he's hard of hearing in one ear. The same ear that George lost. Then there's the obvious connection between the two. They're both redheads. And no, I'm not counting the Timothy Chalamet Wonka movie. And the saddest part is that everything in Willy Wonka's office is cut in half. And that's because George believes he's half a man without his twin brother. That was actually a really cool theory. I'm not going to say I agree with it, but that was a really cool tie-in. Let me know what you guys think. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video, and I make a video like this almost every day. And currently, we're at 11,157 subscribers. And to everyone that's subscribed and or watching, thank you so much for being subscribed, and thank you for watching. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. As always, if you enjoyed any of the clips, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.